On today's episode, we are doing some large scale Christmas decor items on a budget. So let's get right into our first DIY, which is a giant Christmas ornament made out of a beach ball that I picked up at Walmart for $2. <laughs> So the first thing you're gonna need is some sort of plastic container. I just used a leftover one from some Chinese takeout or something like that. And I took my weeding tool from Cricut and very carefully poked two holes on either side. And then I threaded through some gold wire that's very flexible, but still very thick and pinched that in on the inside so that it wouldn't pull out easily. It looks a little kind of funny like this. So I took it outside and spread sprayed it in some gold spray paint and let that dry for a couple of hours. I found some snowflakes on the Cricut Design Space and this is not sponsored by Cricut. This DIY was actually inspired by something I saw on TikTok and I'm putting my own twist on it. The original TikTok used some like white snowflake foam pieces from the Dollar Tree so you could definitely go that route if you want. I didn't see them in my stores so I just decided to cut some out in vinyl. I cut about six out. I only ended up using about five and it depends on what size you made them. I made mine five and three quarters inches on my snowflakes for a point of reference. I feel like I could have maybe even done a few small ones and filled it in a little bit more. So feel free to customize this in the way you want. I also was thinking that you could do swirls or Christmas trees or even stripes. There's just a lot of different ways you can customize this to meet your decor needs. And so this is what we did. And so I, we weeded out the excess vinyl that I didn't need. I used my transfer tape to peel it back and then I applied it onto my ball directly. I didn't have to paint it or anything. And then I did um, like four in a plus sign on the outside. I didn't measure anything. <laughs> if you're a perfectionist, you may want to really mark where you want your snowflakes to go. I just kind of eyeballed it and it's fine with me. <laughs> and then I put one kind of on the bottom. At this point, instead of putting another one on the top, I covered up that barcode that was on it. I could have probably tried to see if I could have gotten it off with rubbing alcohol, but I didn't like my odds on that. And I just figured it would be just as simple to take our little gold topper that we created earlier and add some I used super glue because I didn't want to use hot glue because I felt like the heat of the glue might pop the rubber and I didn't want to mess around with that. I also didn't want to wait for E6000 to dry. So I used Gorilla super glue and it worked great and instantaneous. So that was a major plus. Stuck it on the top and that is it. And come on, how adorable is this? So super cute. Now, like I said, you can make a whole variety of these. I think they would look adorable outside in a tree. You could make a, like three of them and put them in like the archway of your entrance if you have like a covered entrance that you could do. I was not quite ready this early in the season to start pulling out the decor and really go for it. It's still a little bit early, but I wanted to get these ideas out for you as soon as possible. But how doable is this project? It's so simple, so affordable. Like we have less than $5 into these giant Christmas ornament balls and I love it. I think it is so, so cute and I hope you liked it too. And I hope I got your wheels spinning on how you could customize it for your decor. Okay, so for our next DIY, I actually ended up getting two of these large balls. So I thought it would be fun to do another twist on this, maybe a slightly bougier one, but still as easy and hopefully still very, very affordable. It really depends on the fabric you go with. I picked out this beautiful poinsettia fabric from Hobby Lobby. It was 50% off. I think it was about $5 a yard. You're going to need one yard. Also, you could do like a gingham check. I think that that would be really pretty, a Christmas plaid. Just pick out the fabric that works with your decor and then it's totally customized for you. And that's the beauty of this particular project. But before we do anything else, you're gonna also need a coordinating ribbon. And I just eyeballed this. I don't know, I think I ended up with about 24 to 36 inches. I didn't measure. And then I just folded that in half and then knotted it at the very end. We're gonna hold on to that for just a second. And then we're gonna take our yard of fabric and kind of take the ends and 
match them up and ends and match them up and then kind of tuck in any loose pieces but we're trying to get it nice and tight and wrap it around our giant bouncy ball now on another note it's just this while i'm talking to you here i was thinking i've seen like smaller like bouncy balls at dollar tree for a dollar 25 that are a little bit smaller you could totally do this with any size ball and so that's what's beautiful about this so this the ones i used were the ones from walmart that are you know pretty good size i i don't know what the dimensions are so we're wrapping the fabric super tight and then we are going to take a zip tie that i picked up at the dollar tree and i thread it through the hole and pull it almost all the way tight but not quite yet before you pull it all the way you want to slide that knot from the ribbon inside that opening and then you tighten it all the way tight then it holds in place your little string that you're going to use to hang it later and then you tuck that down into there and then you're going to want to cut off any excess fabric that is still hanging out with your scissors because you don't want like a lot of excess fabric. Then I wanted to embellish it a little bit more. So then I had a variety of Christmas greenery that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, but you can use whatever you want. I loved these little velvet poinsettias that I used. I mean, obviously you can see that I love velvet poinsettias and maybe it's because I was born in December. And so they're kind of like my birthday flower and I don't know I just love it and so we're sticking with that theme from the fabric to the embellishments and also a couple of sprigs and berries and pine needles in there and they're all foot faux and so I kind of wrapped them around just to hold them in place at first but then I took another zip tie and I zip tied that around those and made sure that everything was nice and snug and that's it it is so easy to do this project you could reuse the ball if you wanted to nothing has been hot glued nothing has been made permanent and so everything is reusable and you have the most stunning large scale Christmas ornament if you have a very big Christmas tree and you wanted to tuck that into your Christmas tree like it would probably need to be a pretty large scale or you could get just a smaller bouncy ball and tuck some of those into your Christmas tree I think it would be so beautiful but the way I more envisioned these is for or like statement areas, maybe on your front porch, maybe outside, um, maybe on if you have like a really grand staircase and you wanna do a couple of those. It would take you less than five minutes to make it and they really pack a punch. They're beautiful and affordable, we love that and no skills really required. So it's super easy, anybody can do this. Okay, next up we have a marquee and it's a joy marquee. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that this time of year, I really love joy themed Christmas decor. And this is no exception because a little later in the season, I will drop the give joy to the world campaign. I love to do it every year and it's kind of a pay it forward campaign. So I might have some more joy themed Christmas decor coming your way, but I wanted to do this one because it is relatively simple, but yet makes an amazing statement. And it gives a little chance to show off my drill that I just launched a couple of weeks ago. We're still taking pre-orders for that, but I wanted to show it in action and just show you how you can use this. And so the first thing that I did is drill out places to put Christmas ornaments. And you want to make sure that you use the right size bit. So if you're using fairy lights, you just match it up to the base of that. In this case, I used some lights that I got at Hobby Lobby. This is called Forstner bits and they're kind of like a wood boring bit and they really work really well and I used the 3 8 size for the lights that I got at Hobby Lobby and you just put it inside the drill tighten it up and then you drill it and it makes the most beautiful holes with this but if you're using a smaller Christmas light you just need one of the bits that comes inside the set with a drill we're still pre-ordering so none of them are shipping right now we're hoping to get them by Christmas We'll see, <laughs> it's a whole deal. I'm doing the best I can and I am just so excited about it. I'll tell you, I just eyeballed this. I did not measure it out and if that would really drive you crazy and you wanted to measure it out, 
just do it. It, it doesn't for me. So I just kind of drilled out all the holes that I wanted. And then we just went with that. Now, like I said, I picked up this joy sign at Hobby Lobby and it was on 50% off for about $8. It was a great deal, especially for the size and scale of it. It was a little bit more rustic than I wanted to go. I'm trying to get away from like uber rustic things. I think it's okay to have some rustic. This was just really um, rustic for my decor. So this part is optional. You don't have to do this, but I decided to add some more white paint to this and get rid of the sanded edges out. So I did a couple of coats of white acrylic paint over the top to kind of cover up some of that and give it a little bit more polished look for this. And then once that was dry, I taped off the bottom of the letters and I took out some European gold rub and buff and I kind of just bounced that on that brown base to just make it feel elevated a bit. And I'm really happy I did that because I think it really did up the ante on it a little bit. And that dries pretty much instantaneous. So then you just remove the tape and then we move on to adding the Christmas lights. So like I said, I got these Christmas lights at Hobby Lobby and I just started feeding them through, trying to hide as much cord as I possibly could on this. I ended up having to use two strands of lights because I think it had 20 lights on the strand. I made 20 holes, but they weren't like super close enough. So I ended up having to use two strands of light. So just keep that in mind. It was fine for me, but um, that's just something you're going to want to try to do is disguise your mechanics of things, <laughs> if, if you will. To thread it through the hole, I had to remove the light. And then I also had to cut off some of the excess green plastic so it would fit in that hole nice and tight. And so then I would put the back part in and then on the front side, reattach the bulb. And I would do that for each and every one. And then once we had all of our lights, how we wanted them, I took some hot glue and did a little bit of it inside the back of the hole, not on the front side, but on the back where we're hiding some of the mechanics of things. And then I pulled the light all the way back so it was, wouldn't be loose and that glue would hold it in place. And I did that for each and every hole. If you have excess uh, lights or cord, just try to maybe use some twist ties or anything to kind of bunch that all together. And then I hot glued the switches for the lights onto the wood base and it was battery operated. So you can switch out the batteries and that means you can put it anywhere <laughs> and gives you some flexibility on that and then turn it on with that. So I wanted to also hide a little bit more of the mechanics and elevate it a little bit more. So I took like this kind of a blue gray colored poinsettia and some greenery and just hot glued that into place. It just added that little extra something. I don't know, this is optional, but I really, really like the way it looked. And I put it on that side of the Y and I love how this turned out. I think it is so cute. There's something I really have always loved marquee signs. I have made a couple in past years and Christmas holidays. There's something really special about it that time of year. This is no exception. I love this. I think it's fairly easy to do. If you decided not to paint it at all and just kind of leave it as is because you like the look, you would, could do this in a matter of, you know, 20 minutes or less if you're not doing the painting. So it's a very simple project. Um, very, very, very beautiful. I love the way it looks and I hope you do too. So on Pinterest, I found these beautiful Christmas trees that were made out of antique pressed tin. That's not something that I readily find out on my shopping trips, but I really loved the look. So I wanted to see if I couldn't replicate the look without actually having to find antique pressed tin. So the first thing that I did was take a 12 by 24 inch piece of like craft wood that I have in a stash. I bought like a big box of it a few years ago and I've just been taking a piece here and a piece there. I still have some. So anyways, I I just had this in my stash, but you could take any kind of scrap wood you had or just go get a, a small piece at the home improvement store if you wanted to do this. So this was 12 by 24 inches. And then I found a center of the top and I lined it up with the outer edge on each side to kind of create a triangle and I marked that off and that's 
the shape of our tree. <laughs> so then I took it outside and I just used my jigsaw to cut off the edges. I clamped it down into place, jigsawed that off, and we had a tree. Now, if you don't have power tools and you don't want to make it, I'm also going to do another option. <laughs> so I found a Christmas tree that was kind of similar at Hobby Lobby. It kind of had slats and um, I use that, but we're going to do two versions. The one that I made is obviously much larger. So you you could do this in very many varying sizes depending on what you want to do so lots of flexibility with this project so the next thing i needed to do was create a base stand for it and so i also just found another couple of scrap pieces of wood in my stash um, just cutoffs from past projects that would work perfectly i didn't measure them i don't know the dimensions i don't know i'm guessing like eight or nine inches for like the, the tree stump and then the base was probably like six inches by three inches, but basically you just want to make sure that it's stable and it can offset like the weight and it's not wobbly. And so this worked out great. So I didn't make any cuts on this. So I first found center and then I added some wood glue to the, the tree stump <laughs> and then I put that in the middle and then I drilled a screw through the base up into the stem and that would give us some stability. So you're going to want to take some antiquing wax and make the stem look brown like a tree stump and so I, yeah that was super easy to do. You just put it on, rub it off and you know get it to the level of darkness you want. You could use stain. And then I added our little fake tree to this base. Um, I think I left about <laughs> the width of a hand exposed. <laughs> I, you know, my, my measurements are super scientific and that's not really helpful, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident that you can take this and get the idea and still get it done without exact measurements all the time. So we can do this. So you just want to make sure that it's centered. And then I use some wood glue and screws to screw the tree into place as well. And so with our tree attached and with our one that was already pre-made at Hobby Lobby that I got the other Christmas tree that's very similar in like concept we are ready to go to the next level because we're not looking like a pressed tin quite yet so in my stash a couple years ago I bought a roll of pressed tin looking wallpaper so I pulled that out I'll link it below if you want I ordered I believe off of Amazon you could also go in and use the the Fitfo pressed tin tiles that they have at the Dollar Tree I actually had those in my stash but because of the height of the tree I really wanted to do the wallpaper so that it would be uninterrupted um, in the pattern because there was no way that you would be able to use those tiles and not have a seam but a seam would be okay like it wouldn't be the end of the world but I just wanted to try this wallpaper. So I traced out our tree and tried to center it up like on the pattern and I cut that out of the wallpaper. Now, I thought it was pre-pasted. <laughs> So I like wet it and nothing happened and it was not pre-pasted. So what I ended up having to do is I let that piece dry because I didn't want it to go to waste. And then I pulled out my Mod Podge and I just Mod Podged it. And I've never really loved Mod Podge only because I feel like it always bubbles. But in this case, I'm going to say it didn't bubble. And maybe it was just because the, the wallpaper was so thick that it it didn't, I don't know. But I just made sure to do a generous amount of Mod Podge, put that on, and then I kind of flipped it on its face so that there would be a little pressure, put a drill on top of it, and let that fully dry. And then for the little tree, I ran it the other direction just to give it some variety, but you could do whatever you want. And then I went back in to paint it. So you can pick whatever green you want. I will tell you the colors that I used was for the large tree, I used Mossy Meadow in the folk art mat this right here okay and then for the small tree i did the sage shadow chalk paint by folk art okay and that was the little tree i will say in the end i liked the darker tree a little bit better so just take that for what it's worth um i I don't know, I just love the, the darker finished product a little bit better. So you could make a variety of these and a variety of different sizes and pick the greens or the colors that you want. I think it would also look pretty in white, you know. You got this, I know you do because you are super talented. <laughs> then I just painted the front of the wallpaper. I let that dry and to finish it off, I 
wanted to elevate it, you could go back in with antique wax or you could go in and sand it and kind of distress it and go that route. Again, I, I'm trying to lean into a little bit more elevated look. I'm not saying that rustic is not elevated, but it's just a different look. So do the look that, that suits your decor and that you like. So I went in with European gold rub and buff and I had gloves on. That doesn't stand up to the rub and buff very good. So I would recommend just using like a piece of a paper towel to do this part. Then I made sure to hit all the outside edges with a gold rub and buff. And then the high spots, I went in and did a little bit of rub and buff and a little goes a long way with this rub and buff. And like I said, it dries pretty quickly um, and then I also did it like on some of the outside edges of our tree stump and everything so just a little bit of something something if you make a mistake and get a little bit too much rub and buff somewhere don't worry you can go back in with your craft paint and do the touch up and fix that and you'll you'll be fine and then in the end I really like this. I will say, like I said before, that I really do love the richness of the darker one over the light one. Maybe that's something to keep in mind. You could also do, like if you did a white tree, I could see it being really awesome to go back in with like a silver rub and buff and kind of hit the high spot so it looks like it's kind of let the tin um, seep through the paint like over time. So there's lots of flexibility in this. You can pick the rub and buff color of your choice. You could go in and antique glaze it. My goal in doing these projects is not necessarily to get you to do the exact same thing as me. I want you to customize it in a way that it makes sense in your decor and in a way that you will absolutely love. Now, if you wanted to, this is optional. I did not do this to mine. They do sell like stars like this at Hobby Lobby. You could top it off with a star you could drill some more holes and add some Christmas lights on it um, with the, the same method that we did with the Joy Marquee. Lots and lots of options. I think that this is beautiful as is and very, very affordable. I did the one with scrap lumber and then I did a little piece of the wallpaper. I don't remember how much I paid for the whole roll of wallpaper. I hardly used any of it. so you could go the Dollar Tree route, but this is a very affordable, large piece of decor that it is adorable. I love it and I hope you do too. If you're still with me, I just want to share it with all of you that have hung in till the end that my goal in this channel and with my power tool line and all of it is really to help you discover your inner power and if you've lost it to take it back. With that being said, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well and to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.